I, I mean, I grew up in Iceland, which is like a very small country. It's like 350,000 people. And, and the thought of getting to do something like this was just completely, you know, something out of my dreams and something I wouldn't even dare to dream. Um, so it feels, feels really I mean, and, and the fact that, that your music has just reached so many people. In, in such a short span of time. <laughs> it means so much. It's like, it's so cool. I had, you know, such a multicultural kind of background. Mm -hmm. My mother's Chinese mm -hmm. and my father's Icelandic. And then I grew up in the States as well to, to get to bring the project to different countries and, and different cultures. Just, it means a lot. I think it's really fun. And, and since you did bring up your family history, musicians, I mean, music was pretty much part of your everyday life. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, I would, I would think, I mean, your sister is here with you. Your twin is here with you. So yeah. hi. And of course. Um, and she does the violin, right? Your mom does the violin. Yes. Your dad's a big jazz fan. Yeah. Right. And, and all of these things, but, um, when did you discover your love for music or I mean the passion? I mean, it was there. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you don't have to love what's there, right? right. I mean, when did it all start sinking in and this is definitely going to be my life? Uh, I think, well, growing up, music was like I started playing piano at four, okay. you know. My mother, you know, you just yeah, start at yeah, four. Yeah, yeah. No questions asked. Yes, you start yes, playing yes, piano. Yes. And then I started playing cello. And it was almost like another class at school. You know, I didn't think too much of it. It was like, you go to school, you have math, you have science, history, and then you have music after school. And I think it was like when I was 13 or 14 where um, my mother, you know, she was, you know, she push, pushed us like when we were growing up um, and, you know, made sure that we practiced. And then when we turned... 14 or 15 she was like I've done my job you do what you want like if you enjoy it you continue but I've I've you know done my job and I think around that time was also the time that I started playing in orchestra and chamber music and it became it became kind of like a social thing okay I was like see friends yes, at the music yes, school yes. and um I think that's when I really started to love it and I also had started singing at that point and it was kind of like a couple of waves of realization um, I think after I wrote, I started writing when I was like in college and like when I was 19 mm -hmm. or 20 and that was when I was like, yeah, like I have to do this. Like okay. I'd finally found a way to mix, you know, my jazz influences and my classical influences, but also kind of more modern songwriting technique together. And I, I remember just thinking like, I think, I think maybe I can do something with this. Mm -hmm. I remember there was one moment, the very beginning of the pandemic when I just started, I think it was like something happened on social media. I think just like some sort of, all of a sudden I started getting a lot of followers out of nowhere, which sounds like, you know, a weird thing to pin it to. And, um, and I remember I looked in the mirror thinking, wait, do I have like a job now? Am I like a singer by trade? And I remember I looked in the mirror, I was like, I think I do. But, and then also, I mean, there are moments like, yeah. um, when I, I, I got to play on the Jimmy Kimmel show yes in January of last year. I think that was like a, a big, like, mm -hmm. whoa moment. You also mentioned somewhere in, in you know, an interview that, that you had way back when that it actually took you some time to figure out your song or your style, or was it something yeah. that just came easy and this is what I'm going to do? No, not at all. You know, I started singing when I was like 12 or 13, just doing talent shows in Iceland. And and everyone, okay, exactly. <laughs> and, and everyone was telling me, um, and I was covering other people's songs, of course, and a lot of people were telling me, like, oh, you should write your own songs. Okay. And I remember I had this very odd mix of being, like, a singer. Like, I was singing jazz songs, like, when I was, like, 12 or 13. And then I was also playing classical cello and piano. But then I was, like, listening to a lot of Taylor Swift. So it was, like, this odd mix of sounds that I was really obsessed with. And everyone was saying, like, Livy, you should write, you should write. And I tried and it just didn't feel, it felt so uncomfortable to me. I think because I grew up a classical musician where you play other composers' music and I didn't feel confident enough to be making my own music. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, people are going to judge me so much. Yes. And I don't know, I think it also took moving out of my home, moving alone to Boston to go to university to, you know, exper experience real life. And, like, I started, like, dating a little oh, there bit you for go. the first time. <laughs> like, having these adult yeah, experiences yeah, yeah, yeah. which kind of led to me being able to write about it, you know, because otherwise I was just sitting at yeah, home yeah, like yeah, practicing. Yeah. Um, 
So I think something clicked in that moment where I finally found a way to bring it all together. And so, so with that, that whole experience of yours um, brought about your first EP. Yes. And it was like what? It was it pretty much all the songs that you've ever written. Yes, came out <laughs> yeah. came out in that. I mean, there was like Absolutely. nothing was left like somewhere. Like no, you know? there are no unreleased songs from that time. Um, yeah, the, all of my first songs I would say that I ever wrote are on my EP and my mm -hmm. first album. Like at that point, finishing a song that I liked almost felt like an accident. You know, I, I'd finish a song, I'd be like, oh, whoa, I don't know if I can ever do that again, okay. but I like that and yeah, let's yeah, record yeah, yeah, it and yeah, let's yeah. put it on the album. All right. Yeah. And, and so how difficult was it to come out with your debut album from your EP? Was there more pressure? I think there was definitely a little bit of pressure that, that I was just putting yeah. on myself, really. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I'm so lucky in that I started with so much support from my fans, you know, yeah. oftentimes artists will release music and then grow a fan base, whereas I felt like I had actually done it the other way around, where I had grown a bit of a community yes. and then released music. So I already felt that that support from my fans was so sweet. Because you also mentioned like in TikTok that you would have to like try it out first. Yes, I mean, if you exactly. like it, then okay, it, it goes in the album. Yeah, I'm going to go. And to this day, I still do that, you know, if I, if I write like a, a part of a song and I'm like, okay, maybe... Maybe this is something I'd post like a little mm -hmm. clip of it on TikTok or Instagram or turn on a live stream and see. And, and I could tell like if fans took to it, I'd finish yeah. the song and release it. But was there ever a pressure for you to do another genre, to go more popish or I mean, no. conform to whatever society or whatever was such a big hit at that moment? Not at okay. all, I think. I... I, I thought that that would be an issue and I was ready to be like, I'm going to be, yes, a I'm going to stick to what I want. Oh exactly. Yeah. But I didn't have to because I, 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 maybe it's because there's just already so many great pop musicians out in the world that they didn't need another. And I guess not many people doing this genre. So I actually found like in my first album, I definitely, in everything I know about love, I definitely yeah. experimented a little bit more with like modern production. And some of the songs are a little more pop um, while others are more jazz, but I, I almost like as a tester to see what the fans would take to. And by some stroke of luck, it seems that the fans take the most to either what is sounds most jazzy or what is yeah. a song that's literally with a symphony orchestra, which is the easiest for me and my favorite to make. So well, what is it about jazz that you love so much that you would love for this generation um, to discover? I think just the way that the stories are told are so magical and so cinematic it's very literal you know you always get a description of what it looks like what people are wearing what it smells like um i also think like the music is just the musical component component the m melodies and the harmonies are just so charming and and um complex but in a simple way yeah but it kind of doesn't make sense but i just think it sounds so romantic now that we are touring Tell me a little bit about what's it like, the preparation that you had to go through um, or that you're doing now, set lists, I mean, the songs that you'll be performing at, in the tour. Yeah, I mean, the, um, the preparation has been pretty smooth. I've been doing um, a lot of press for my, um, for my recent yeah. single release, yeah. the song From the Start, and kind of wrapping up my second album. Already? Okay. okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's done. It's done. <laughs> It is not, okay, wait, wait, hold on. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Here. We are okay. getting ahead of ourselves. But, um, so I've kind of been working on that, but I think, you know, I'm playing playing solo. Yeah. It's pretty relaxed. I think and, and, I've just been um, prioritizing, like, self-care, yeah. getting enough sleep. And yes. You mentioned already about your latest single from the start. Tell me about the inspiration. Is that the Bossa Nova-ish? Yeah. Absolutely. Sound. I well, I I've been listening to a lot of bossa nova recently, which is Brazilian music, and I just think it's I'm, I'm so charmed by it, and I wanted to record a song in this very old bossa nova style, like no modern production, just live playing, and make it sound like it's a song from like you know a, a '60s recording of bossa nova, but with very kind of like modern experiences in the lyrics and. Um, so the song itself is kind of, um, the lyrics are talking about kind of this unrequited love of being in love with a friend, essentially, that doesn't really like you back. 
and kind of that feeling and um, kind of like a little bit of a cheeky tone to it, I would say. We wish you all the best. Thank you, Thank so, you much so much for sitting down and with chatting with us here on CNN Philippines. And we Thank look forward for having to having me. you back here once again as Absolutely. a regular destination for you. Absolutely. Thank wish you all the best. You.